The Oregon Country Fair. that represent your purpose based on your birth date. Now, I happen to know that you were born on November 1st, 1969. And I know you used a different name those days. You called yourself the Renaissance Fair or something like that. And now, of course, Oregon Country Fair, we all know that name, right? I also know that it was about having a new renaissance and that is the spirit and you're gonna see it in these cards so let's let's go to the cards now I'm gonna show you the cards one at a time and each card has its own individual message but then all three of them have a very powerful relationship together so we're gonna look at that too let's start with the magician card now the magician is number one and numerology says that has a very special significance. As the number one in the major arcana, which is the major laws and lessons of life in the Tarot, the one represents absolute yang energy, total centralized focus like a laser beam. You can also think of it as a seed that was planted. So back in November 1st, 1969, you planted a seed. And the magician manifested your vision. Makes sense to me. And so the magician is the manifester. He or she has all the tools necessary to manifest and create their vision. And that's what you did. I'm so glad you did. Because here we are today. So as we go through the journey of your reading, I think you'll see what we're talking about.
fair models and a vision of the world where history is valued, alternative cultures, alternative peoples and personalities are brought together and allowed to flower, honoring the past and making possible the future. And that's that's a vision for people that I think is empowering throughout the year. In the darkest days of one's life, in the darkest hours of the year, that sense of what the world can be and who we can be together is as empowering and lovely as, I don't know, any piece of poetry, any piece of dogma. And to have that exist, even if it's only for a few days, is just such a value, I think, to anyone who comes here. And of course you can come and acquire wonderful skills, and of course you can come and acquire wonderful goods produced in ways that we can all respect and be proud of. But I think it's that sense of what the world is and who we are together that's most special. It's what would bring me back here again and again, and it's what I'm proudest to, to be part of. We are here to promote the use of renewable energy, recycling, and healthy food and agriculture practices. We have our new annex as of two years ago called Wheels of Revolution, the parking lot where we have alternative fueled vehicles. We have booths around here talking about different ways of living, um, composting and organic farming, solar powered homes, um, biodiesel fuels, water pumping, solar hot water. We have solar hot water showers that people are using right now. Very popular on hot days. This technology dates back 2,500 years to the ancient Incas and Greeks who uh, used gold, silver, and bronze to create these. Uh, it's demonstrated here using ballpark stadium lights and the satellite dish, which is capable of frying food and baking popcorn. All these made out of discarded items to pose the question, if it's a 2,000-year-old technology and you can build it out of junk, what has the Department of Energy been doing for the last 50 years? And the answer is they build nuclear weapons. Our Department of Energy builds nuclear weapons. That's their main job. And uh, the ironic thing is that we use this technology to watch Monday Night Football and Baseball, but it could be used to boil the water of the 30,000 children that died of waterborne illness today. No one knows where the wind comes from. No one knows where the wind goes. But all in all, one day we all shall feed the crows. Humans use too many products that are one use only and it's absolutely ridiculous. Um, in a society as intelligent as ours, you would think that we wouldn't be producing things like this. Plastic is the bane of a recycler, so it's it's a non-reusable product. This pit for our garbage, we sent away 150 yards of garbage last year. That only represents 10% of what we actually um, process each year. So the 90% is what we recycle, whether it be compost, glass, metal, whatever it is. We try to take the garbage and separate it into its components. It's really about breaking it down. All, everything in nature produces garbage, including humans. However, we don't break our garbage down into its components so that it can be reused. <laughs> Making things green again. Okay, so uh, this is the dock, and at the far end over there we have the glass and cans. So all the bottles marked glass and cans. Okay. All the bottles marked glass and cans get dumped on that dock, and then they get sorted cans and glass on this side. The glass gets walked down here into these boxes. The pile it on pallets, put the pallets back there. A couple of the extras end up down the middle. Cans go up on the very top. Fill this thing floor to ceiling, wall to wall, and that gets turned into extra income. And then there's the plastics there, and this year we're going to do a whole lot more returnable plastics than previous years, so we'll make some money off of that too. Yeah, good stuff. Da -da -da -da! Recycle! Using compostable cups, and using all, all the food scraps and paper and making compost for the gardens so they can grow food for main camp.
So it's a beautiful circle, right? <laughs> Someone made me this dress. Someone in the fair, because it's a totally recycled dress. See, it's made out of bicycle. In it, bicycle inner tubes. <laughs> There's a big variety of different people from professors to, I'm a bookkeeper and a tax preparer to just about any kind of job you can think of. It's not just like garbage people. We're just like we're professionals in the real world. <laughs> and all the girls are tomboys. We were all tomboys when we were kids. Or else how could we walk around in this garbage? <laughs> we fit here. Some of us have passions. Some of us... Here, it's waste reduction. And I've come together into a family of others just like me. Didn't have that family before. Here I fit in and all these people seem to understand that I'm a nut and I'll sort through anything to recycle it. I watch these people sweat every year and it tears me up. It's the most beautiful thing. Look at them. We do incredible things. Incredible volunteers that put in a lot of time for this event. They love this event. This is our part. This is what we can contribute to the next generation. It'll be here at this event, we hope. We hope. Generation's not even here yet. Because others before me, before you, did so much for us so that we could be here today. I feel honored. Every barrel I sort, every piece of garbage I pick up, I'm honored to do it for my family. good point that recycling is an answer for the problem. Durables is. Like, you're trying to solve a problem with recycling and it's just not really working as well. So if we just reuse, we won't have anything to recycle. <laughs> We're taking them back to the Little Tom River, and there's a bunch of hippies down there with pine cones, and we just scrub them off until they're really good and clean, and then we put them back into service. <laughs> Here we are at the Oregon Country Fair, one of my favorite places to be and play with okay, all the people. Okay. Make sure that you keep the earth clean and give all your leftover food to the worms. <laughs> it's what you're willing to sacrifice for. Your wants are simple. Good food, good sex, good sleep. We're all the same. And society is really good at focusing on those and exploiting them. But what defines you as a person is what you're committed to. What are you willing to sacrifice for? That's what makes you a person. Otherwise, you're just a human doing. But what we gotta do is start straight through the heart of hay. So we it to the love that we have for one another. Come on, all people, all young people, everyone. And that is each other and violence ain't never gonna solve. No kinds of problems, let me hear you say. wonderful fair with so many happy and smiling faces. It's just a joy to be in this uh, environment and I appreciate the uh, creators for creating such an opportunity. Oregon Country Fair rules! Stay green. The people, the atmosphere, the music, the food, mostly the people though. Never a harsh word at the Oregon Country Fair. Nothing but fun. Well, the community village is the heart of the fair, and we make the world a better place because we're full of social change 
and social justice and nonprofits and organizations that are active every day out in the world, not just at the country fair, spreading this energy and spreading this kind of vibe in the real world and bringing the fair into the lives of ordinary people and saving the world by saving trees and by stopping war and by building intentional communities and all of the wonderful things that we're doing out in the world. So the community village, I think, is the spirit of the fair made alive every day. It is still fairly common practice, particularly for the Bureau of Land Management, which is another federal agency, to log trees this size and bigger and older. Uh, and our mission, our goal, is to, to change that, to protect these trees, to protect old growth forests, what little is left in Oregon, and to uh, instead develop an economically and environmentally sustainable approach to managing our public lands. Here we can let him try it again. You can try it again. One more, One more time. Wait, wait, the top's not on it. The top's not on it. Okay. Okay. We can have another chance at it. Yay! Strong work. Okay. Amazing musicians playing music on all the stages. There's vaudeville artists. There's things that you wouldn't see anywhere else in the world. Bubble blowers, uh, Tom Naughty the bubble blower, doing sacred geometry with his bubbles. Um, jugglers that juggle more amazing than you would. As a matter of fact, some of the most amazing juggling came in the world came out of Oregon Country Fair. Juggling is one throw. You make a single throw back and forth. It's always the same throw. I don't even know why we bother to use other balls to do it if it's always the same throw. So when you're learning, you make one throw, one throw. Then you learn to do two throws. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. And then you choose a ball. For our purposes here, it's going to be the one with the blue rim on it. You always throw first. So instead of going right side first, right side first, right left, Right left, right left, you choose the blue ball. Left right, right left, left right, right left. This gives you the right alternating rhythm. Feel that snap? That snap is where my third ball is going to go. The snap is gone, but a third ball is there. And what am I doing? I'm making that same single throw that I started with. Now, how does one get started? You have two in one hand, one in the other. With juggling, the secret is to always have one ball in the air and two in your hands. For that to work, it's simple math. If I throw the one hand ball up, I'm going to have no balls here, but two balls here. That's not how it works. One in each hand. So start with hand that is two, making that single throw we did before. And you go one, two, three. And at first, you go one, two, three. But you learn eventually to juggle. What I'm doing here is teaching people to juggle. We have a Yes You Canopy. At the Yes You Canopy, a number of people have brought together juggling props and teachers so that people can have a play and enjoy the things that people like me enjoy, juggling and having a good time sharing our fun with others. things about the fair is like when you look at the Buddha usually they have this mudra of the hands being like that and he's sitting there meditating but it's also like the eight of the country fair and in that mudra it's like between the light world and the dark world and we both need everyone needs both things happening and you have to be right in the center and that's what's amazing about the fair to me at the moment you know it's interesting for me because in the in the 60s in the, in the 70s there, this wasn't the only one of these we did this we did this uh, across the country in different places actually across the planet there were things like this um, some very big, and, and they all disappeared. And this one just 
kept going. It didn't. It didn't weaken along the way. It got stronger. Uh, yeah, bless the staff that does the, the work year round. It makes puts this kind of hard shell around because this is soft little thing. <laughs> We're doing this cultural thing that you know died out. The, the, that young plant we had in, in a lot of places, but it, it just kept going here. Um, I mean, in the early days, I'm sure you've talked to other people, and they they talk about how they snuck in their first year, and then they. Uh, before they got involved and found a place where they could do the work and, and end up with one of the passes that's the reward for doing the work. The reward being, I don't know, the reward being that you get to do a lot more work. <laughs> you know, you get to keep working. That's Somebody asked me one time to describe the fair in one word and, and I, I really shocked myself by saying work was, <laughs> it was the first word that came out. I mean, I do more work here than I do anywhere else. You, you run, well, okay. Uh, let me say, I blow bubbles for a living year-round. <laughs> All the rest of it. So it isn't saying a lot to say that I do more work when I'm here. Um, but people really, but people think they know about bubbles, but they think they know they're wrong about it. They're really, they think they're kind of like glass, really fragile. They're the opposite of glass. They're, they're, they're infinitely flexible. They're fluid. They're, they're, you blow on the wall, dents in, forms bubbles inside. They're nothing like glass. They're, they're, well, they're kind of like balloons. And, and if you point, point in with something sharp, it'll, sharp is meaningless to a bubble. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything. To a, and it's not like a little bit like a... It's meaningless. It's just it's the opposite. If it's wet, you can put a knife inside of it. If it's, if it's dry, it'll break it. <laughs> they're wet and dry, and they're really not at all like uh, balloons or bubbles. What we think we know, because we haven't paid attention to them, they seemed kind of a messy thing. You blew, you spilled the jar. That was it. That was the whole toy. Yay! That's a, good, that's a good bubble. I like that one. I'm going to take that one back to my tent with me. What <laughs> fun tonight. Okay, go. Well, but here's a better way. Sugar, how y'all doing? I know you're doing good. You're feeling, making me feel all fine all over. Look at that right there. Right there. Maybe right there. Maybe it's right there. I don't know. Where's it at? Can't find it? Gonna have to look a little closer, aren't ya? The second one is Fortune. Now I'm working with the Voyager and I know they changed the name. This would be the Wheel of Fortune, number 10. Now, in this deck, Fortune says, what do you really find fortune with? What do you really value? Do you value family? Do you value spirit, intelligence, emotions? What is it that's really important to you? What is your vision? And to put that at the very, very, very top of your priority list. And don't get distracted by all the little details. Really stay focused on that vision and that intent because this potent magician is going to manifest whatever is at the top of that list. And that way you don't spread your seed too far either because the one is the seed that you planted back in 69. The other side, let me tell you a little bit about the shadow side of this Wheel of Fortune because that is what it's called in other decks. It's a wheel which reminds us that there's seasons and there's cycles and we change as we age from our youth maturity, middle age, and then into eldership. So does the fair. It goes through its changes. It goes through its seasons. And some of us see ourselves on the outside of the wheel of life, which means we feel like we're a victim of life and life runs us over. But the spiritual lesson, we're actually in the center, in the hub. We're the observer of life. And we see the ups and we see the downs, but we don't take it personally. But the real shadow to watch out for is that that is the source of addictive behavior. Watch out for addictions. Watch out for attachments to people, places, and things. Because then we think that our source of love and light is outside of us. But we know, and I know this is your path, that it's truly inside. 
inside your heart, the place where spirit speaks to you. Magician knows that because he knows that's where the source of his inspiration comes from and what comes through his magic wand. The ceremony and its transformation will be taking place soon. In all hearts it will ripple out for healing in the rivers of the cosmic bliss. So what we come here to do as souls is basically learn two things. One is how to hold and manage and apply free will. Because we're given free will by the universe, being points of consciousness. But we're not use it very often. Most of what we do is impulsive or reactive or habitual or instinctual. And by the time we take a lot of stuff out, there's just not much left. But we have the potential for free will. We carry free will. The ability to choose. Well, we have to learn how to hold center to do that. Fortunately, the center is all God, love, and free will. So if you get there, not only do you have a choice, but you probably make a loving choice, but you got to find true center. So we're here learning how to do that and hold that against all odds. And the other thing we're learning is how to play nicely with other free will beings. <laughs> So you take six billion of these points of consciousness, you stick them on one tiny little rock, very condensed, and what do you get? All kinds of practice to do those two things. Hold your free will. Step right up, don't be late. There's something coming and it's going to be great. It's the talent show. That's right. We hear there's going to be a talent show. Right now. Everyone. We'll have a chance to be a star. Come get your Kooka Wugga Bunchin, Snickerdoodle Mongoose, Fuzzy Tachatori, Skunk Wucky Key, Fruit Fly Quarantine, Three Day Quarantine, One Buck, Three Glop, Waterfly, Hot Slot, Pigs in a Blanket, Cows on the Floor, Take One Bite and you run for the Door, Sticky Cheese, Demodor, Asakessa Theodore, Smelly Sardines, Bad Luck Beans, Easy Owl Casserole, Chicken in a Hot Home, Monkey Meat Medley, Tasty But Deadly, Parakeet Bonsai, Fricassee Frog's Eye, Tree Toad Neck, Gin a la Black, King size pesto gizmo stew, greasy garmy go for guts to undo. What's in camp food? Nobody knows, but it sure tastes great. And you hold your nose. share music and color with the fair and, and we do it as many years as we can and and sometimes we work at Dana's Cheesecake and sometimes we play music on the trail and, and we always stop traffic if we can. Oh yeah. That's the yeah. fun part. Yeah. We love to <laughs> share love here and watch the children grow up and, and share the spirit of the fair. And eat. And the first time I came here I was seven years old. My parents were following signs that said country fair and they thought that they could find honey and Horsey rides and a birdhouse, and they found all three, and it was amazing because uh, it was it was not the kind of fair they thought they were going to find. <laughs> I love the fair. I've been coming since I was three months old. Yep. So the fair is 
changed my life and I am fairy every day of my life. But, well, it's our first year. We were <laughs> pregnant last year. We're sisters. Yep. So, and our five year old though, she's, this is her about fifth year. And then, yeah, so first years and fifth year. <laughs> We've and we've been here every year since we were little, so it's kind of new generation. I couldn't figure out why it wasn't like this all the time. Like, why is why is there why is it normal? What's normal? This seems more normal than uh, real life. Why can't we just live out here? I didn't get it. <laughs> this seems more this seems more real. <laughs> Happy now. He, he likes hungry. it. He was just hungry. All of his friends and family are here. He's the center of attention. This is you want to see something cool? Yeah. I got a fair a peach tattoo. Oh, wait. Let me come in on it. <laughs> okay, she's got a peach tattoo. <laughs> What's that mean? Well, I'm a fair baby. This is my 21st year, um, and it just reminds me of Oregon and the fair and being a hippie. <laughs> it was awesome, you know, like every year you got to wear your tutus and your wings and be a fairy for three days, and everybody believed you for once, you know? And you got to get your face painted, and it's like, what more could a kid ask for? And the love. It's a family here, you know? Everybody knows each other, everybody loves each other. So that's the best part. <laughs> Uh, my favorite thing about the fair is camping up at Water Crew. It's great. I like pretty much everything about the fair. It's awesome. It's fun, exciting, it's new. No. What do you guys like? Mostly, I like about the fair is what you get to do a lot of stuff and it's really fun and cool. My favorite part is about the fair is where you go to the park. I just love being here. It's just so fun, exciting. I my shoe. It's like so red, head rush. Just love to stand here. It's so fun. And the food's great. Yeah. The food's great. Children. The children of our favorite pot, they are simply wonderful, every single one of them, look at them all. You made the auntie very proud. You all have a wonderful year, yes? Hello, 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 happy fair to you. I'm a virgin and it's marvelous. Indeed. I'm 75 and I've never been to this, so they brought me. We, we thought she Lake had Washington. to go to an Oregon I Country do. Fair. Fabulous. Fabulous. This is my 35th fair. Wow. It's the only thing that's been a constant in my life. <laughs> I never even made Christmas with my family 35 years in a row. <laughs> this is family. Uh, does, it, does it need like a water? What makes 4A wonderful at the fair is that it allows people with mobility um, impairments of any kind to be able to come to this wonderful environment where it's very healing and good energy. And, you know, in the 19 years I've been here, there are so many ultra-abled people who come to this fair every single year, time after time, from all over the country, not only because it's wonderful energy, as everybody knows, but because we make it accessible for them to be here. And that makes me very happy. The fair is great. It's different from a Harley fair. A lot different. <laughs>
but the people are just great here. So. Circular bird, his name is Seymour. Seymour sees everything. And uh, I made him from, from pine wood. And the slug, of course, is made from the top half of my motorcycle sidecar, sitting on a wagon. <laughs> Want to get a picture of And of course, I'm the stealth elf gnome. <laughs> He's more relaxed. I'm more relaxed. That's just better for everybody. Every, all, the, every, all the bad people come here, so the rest of the world's way better. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I think people just feel a lot freer to act like children in a good way. <laughs> okay, get ready, get set, go, 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 go. Press those buttons, press, yeah, boing, 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 ding, ding, ding. You ain't nothing but a hound dog, you ain't nothing but a hound dog. Boing, 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 incoming, incoming, boing, ding, 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 ding. drums, rattles. I've uh, been coming here 20 years. Uh, there's nothing like it. Um, the magic that happens here, especially at nights, but all the time. For It starts out woods and ends up a village of a family that is very loving and very dear. Uh, I make the drums out of mostly elk, moose, buffalo, because um, it's a little thicker, holds its tone a little better. Um, these are mostly bleached um, elk and my son paints them, and uh, he does beautiful work, I think. This is kind of nifty, and you turn it over, totally different animal, a bird and then a man. This is the first drum I ever made, and this is how most drums are made, and it's 16 holes drawn back across and drawn together at the center. The ones I make now are 64 holes, and they're drawn to an outside ring. And then I can put anything inside I want. Star patterns, dream catchers. It's, um, it's probably the most important thing in my life, you know, that I do every year is this fair. You know, like people say to you when you walk in, you know, walk around here, they say, welcome home. And that's what it feels like.
I say welcome to the Oregon Comfy Chair. <laughs> Nineteen sixty-nine, and most of the older people in this audience were here. <laughs> Recognized that was an evolutionary event that changed the planet within weeks, and that was when we took a picture of the Earth from the moon's surface, and that brought in the reality. That's all there is: little blue-green gem floating in dark space. And what happened within days of that photograph? The first Earth Day happened. And why did that happen? Because with the perspective, a new picture came in and everyone said, oh, we better take care of that. We gotta take care of that water. And we, we better take care of that land and take care of those children. And we better take care. Folks, nurturing is taking care and nurturing is the character of mammals. The mammal generation was seeded in 1969. And the result of that is it was a small group and it's the country fair is testament to it's still here, and it's growing bigger and bigger day by day. <laughs> I wonder why. It's called color and texture. Yeah. <laughs> Vive la fer! Vive la fer! Okay. Rise for freedom. Join me in revolution. Insist on justice. Rise against the tyranny of aristocracy. They enslave you. Shake your magic. Shake your money maker. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm a grape. They fed me so many grapes, I turned into one. The peasant fan club. The followers of the demonstration. The French kissing. The French kissing. The French kissing. I almost Only thought here. the French were Only disgusting. Here. They were really having way too much fun. <laughs> well, leave it to the French. Where attention goes, energy flows. Make sure you know what side you're working for. We're working for the perfection of the planet. Don't focus on the bad stuff, focus on the good stuff, because it's all good. <laughs> Again, you have the magical trio. We have one last card for you to look at. The sun. No doubt this must be why you changed the date from November to July, because you're really aligning with your ultimate purpose here, which is to be more aligned with the light and the love and the source of the sun. The sun is the card of enlightenment. It's the oneness that we've all come here to remember. It's the honoring of diversity and actually no longer living with shadow, releasing shadow, integrating shadow, 
collecting, here I am, warts and all. <laughs> Actually, if you were looking at this card in another deck, you'd see an innocent child on the back of a horse, completely naked, because the nakedness shows, just like the fair does, I can be my entire self, there's no shame, I'm completely open in my spirit, and I'm here to share it with all. And that is ultimately the vision of the fair. So it's no wonder you would choose November 1st of 1969 to initiate this journey for all of us, and I thank you. We are here to make magic and beautiful things happen at the country fair, to be sure that we are delighted to our fancy, to be sure that our dreams are coming true, and to affirm all the beautiful people that live around us. It's all about love, it's all about magic, and it's all about being at the country fair. I think you're wonderful Somebody says that to me special in someone each day. We lift up the world one heart at a time, and it all starts by saying this one little rhyme. I think you're wonderful. Somebody says that to me. stealing your money, I just want to steal your hearts. Come with me, come to the fair! <laughs>
Don't ask what the world needs. Ask what makes you come alive and then do it. Because what the world needs is people who've come alive. So if I had to crunch what I think the fair's about and why it's creating a better world, that'd probably be it. This is what has made my professional life possible, actually possible. I switched careers six and a half years ago. I'm now a school librarian, and what I am, what it brought out is my performing side. So I'm not one of those. May I help you, librarians? I, I get to perform. I get to go out. I do stories. I do costumes. I do all this stuff because I'm liberated by this experience. And this, is what, I, this is what I do Leopard here. It's over, and then we go home, and it, we leave nothing. We go down to like the level of the individual sequence, and you know, it's all it, we bring it all in. And it, but it's so worth it. It's so great just to be in this place and in these big trees. We always look up at the sky, and there's this connection with all these people who spent all their time here before us. Not just not just during the fair, but also. You know, for thousands of years, a place where people came in the summer because it's a beautiful spot. And so just to be part of that, I'm getting goosebumps talking to you. It's so good. <laughs> in real life I probably wouldn't be wearing this stuff or be acting as free or crazy as I do out in the parades and it's just a good excuse to come out and be someone that I'm normally not so it's awesome and very expressive and it's good to see all the kids and all the adults just love you and you just show off for them and you just give them a little loving and they give you love right back. It's my birthday on the Oregon Country Fair's best day, and I'm having a great time. It's absolutely wonderful here. We'll probably be back next year, and anybody who's watching this should definitely come. I just like that everybody here is really, you know, just, just free to roam and just kind of be themselves, and, and there's no, you know, there's no judgments or anything like that. Everybody kind of does what they do. And you feel and really, really safe, fun. like everyone's here for the right reasons, so you can really be here in harmony too. Definitely, and it's very relaxed, most important. Madame Calliope is traveling in Florio. And I am Prince Caspi Wasawagame. We're just, we're just here having fun and uh, and selling our maps, and we are, uh, we've got these wonderful set of cartographers who come in and display all their artwork, and uh, we just uh, do our best to, to just have a great time and uh, watch all the people as they go by and come into our gallery and hang out. So we're, we're happy. We're very happy. <laughs> I like to come to the fair because here I am with the people that appreciate what I do the most in the whole world and with friends and family that I know from all over the world. We meet here to celebrate our time together and to show what we've been up to and our creative efforts. And so I 
thoroughly enjoy bringing as many of my pieces out here as I can and sharing them with everyone because I feel that part of my mission as an artist is to help to foster some positive cultural changes through people being able to visualize a future world and also see the things that aren't so good now in, in a more clear perspective so they can decide how to act. So I like to bring my stuff out here and share that energy with everyone. And I think the fair is a great place to do it because the fair itself represents changes along those lines and is an example of how we can live together as a global community and appreciate each other's diversities and, and strangeness and have a good time while doing it. So I like to bring my little bit to the fair here to share it with the bigger fair and hopefully all the folks that come here take a little bit back home and start their own little cultural anything back where they come from to seed the energy out and spread it throughout the world. So hopefully we can uh, be having festivals instead of wars. Here we go. Yep. Sing it. Right. Ah. <laughs> Express it. Made from my mom's apartment. You know, scratch cooking. Like my grandmother, you know, being Creole, these are generation things. These aren't things that a chef taught me, honey. These are legacies that are left behind for me to survive. Easy lifestyle. Easy lifestyle, colorful, kind of takes it back in time a little bit, somewhat, and feel good with the positivity of everything. And we can be ourselves. <laughs> and I think that it's wonderful. It is a real global village. It's just beautiful. It's, uh, <laughs> we're camped out with the stilt people, so we get to help them, like, get their gear on in the morning. and. Uh, also, the construction people, and, and they help get the whole thing together beforehand, and that's what my sons do, is help get it all together so they understand like what it takes to get this thing going, and they love it. They've loved it for years, ever since they've told me about the cowboy juggler to all the things that they do now as young adults. Well, I almost never talk about myself, but I could show you rocks. For example, the amber has ants in it, and the amber has termites in it. And I encourage people to look at things just for fun. So I'll show them things like opals and say, well, you know, go, go find some light to look at it. And here's what the rock itself would look like. You're looking for this, but you don't really know if it goes in. You don't really know what it's going to do. You know, you're just buying it by the pound and then see what you find inside and some places sparkle and some don't but i really 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 encourage people to handle stuff like the banded opal well this is this is a new product this year this is this is uh lab tables for computers it just sits right on the floor there or in bed the, i'll tell you the best thing is watching movies in bed we don't have a tv so this is our tv and it sits right there in front of you it's just Wait, you cuddle up right together and it's just right there. It's just great. I love it. From Mayan glyphs to text messages, vestiges of life passage remain symbolically framed in our imperfect writings. And thus we go on words striding. Talking about courage for all of us to face up, courage to speak out. Find the courage to hold on to your beliefs even if the world around you chooses to believe differently. Have the courage to change those beliefs that no longer fit the, per the person you have become. In doing so, you truly become 
yourself. You mind if I use this and call my agent real quick? <laughs> I, I could let you use it. You could let me use it? Uh-huh. Oh, you're going to be poking on him. Don't poke on him. <laughs> grab, it with like, grab it like a man. Grab it like a man. There we go. Come on now. All these beautiful men. <laughs> Yeah, and the love food. and the, and the women are the breasts. I love the breasts. It allows you to just be accepting of all things and all people, however they want to be. It's great. It's very open. It's wonderful to see all kinds of people here. And how, how's it affected you personally? I get my boobs painted every year. <laughs> <laughs> and I like that. It's fun. It's a, it's a phoenix. It's a, it's a bird with a bent. Yeah, it's, it, it's, yeah. Yeah, and it's just, it's just nice to walk around and everybody, you know, most people are good about asking permission to take your picture. And I always say yes. Like, come on, ladies, you want to join us? Come on. <laughs> She's videotaping, not just oh, taking your is. picture. Because it brings People every together. kind of person together yeah. and it makes everyone happy. Yeah. You don't see any mad people here. Uh, yes, I haven't seen one mad person no. here at all. They're all happy and they all want to be here. We yeah. might not be young age-wise, but young we are young. young. Yeah, we we have very free. young spirits, free yeah. spirits. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, a free spirit, that's good. That's what we are. Yeah. And we'd like to be able to do this. You know what? Because if it wasn't for these gals, you we guys would be here. Be here. <laughs> tell you we have three generations on water crew of my family alone. My dad, my kids, and me. Aunts and uncles on water crew, cousins on crew. Um, yeah, and it's kicking the pants. Or you can move this and let the pressure out. <laughs> We built a reservoir there about, I don't know how many years ago it was, me and Tim Walden, probably 1980, oh well, I can't remember when, a while ago, 14,000 gallons. Yeah, right there, that concrete thing, it's the, yeah, it's called Walden Pond. Then once we get right up to fair, after we get our system flushed and sanitized and okayed, we go and we start delivering all the water. And, you know, we start Wednesday delivering potable food grade water um, to those group on Wednesday. And they know who they are. And then uh, Thursday morning and Thursday afternoon we go out again. And that's a pretty dry run, so there's a lot of water going out. Um, then Friday morning. It's bright and early, 7 o'clock, 7 o'clock at night, and we go, and we work hard. Then we also send out dusters during the day for dust patrols. Then we have um, our plumbers and our con uh, um, construction guys that are on call pretty much the most of the weekend going around and fixing leaky faucets, broken ones, ones that they think they're broken in their house. This is a leaky, a leaky faucet right here, and we're turning the pressure off, about to reel it up. All in the life in the day of a water crew member. All right, we wheeling it up. Here, let me get somebody to help. This is just our, our first major fill up is today. So we've been out since nine o'clock because we got to do everybody and then come back, you know, because a lot of dishwashing and stuff like that going on. So, but we're just about done. This is our last stop. <laughs> No water, no fare. Period. Yep, not the city comes and tests it. Everything is golden. State certifies it, stamps it. Good to go. The saunas, we can put 100 people in one of them. Yeah, the new long sauna that's not fired up yet. We have the small sauna, the serious sauna. It's maybe 8 to 10 people. The round sauna, 40, 50, 60 people. Have you been in there before? It's amazing. And how many showers are there? John Litke would know how many showers better than me. Ben, how many showers are in there? How many showers in there? John, how many showers are in the... He would know. Approximately. 72. 
72. That's an affirmative number. Yep. It was no guess. Yep. So he would know he does the plumbing. And this is our 33rd year that we've been providing this uh, service here to the to the fair. And we started out quite humbly. It was the first time we'd ever tried to do anything like a public bathing scene. And of course, we struggled with the idea of what, we, you know, what was going to happen. How were we going to segregate it? How could we make a men's and a women's side? And we had very little money. And we figured, well, you know, they'll just sort it out. And maybe only men will come or whatever. And people stood in line for an hour and a half to take a cold shower. And we decided we were onto something. And, we uh, began from that day forward to try to make this a, a really positive experience and learn as we went about what it took to, uh, to bathe people community and realized the incredible importance of the physical environment in making people comfortable and safe and being able to enjoy that experience, particularly because we're a culture that communal bathing is not a traditional part of our repertoire. In other places in Finland and Japan and other places in Asia, it's not unusual for people and families to bathe together. But in this culture, uh, it is the exception to the rule. Uh, and so, as, along with a lot of the other kind of magic that there is at the country fair, uh, the sauna, I think, contributes to that magic and making it possible for uh, people to come here and enjoy the most positive aspects of that kind of communal bathing opportunity. Uh, it takes an incredible, incredible amount of energy and time and effort to put this on collection of artists and craftsmen who come from all over the country and many of the Pacific Northwest but in, in some cases from all over the world. Uh, every year they make a pilgrimage back here to the sauna and, uh, and do this work. Uh, so it's, it's a remarkable, remarkable thing. Uh, we burn about 15 cords of wood here in just four days. Uh, we truck in about 325,000 gallons of water from either Veneta or the city of Eugene and it's all heated right here. Uh, and we basically are heating and using 70 gallons of hot water a minute at our peak. And it's a lot like potlatch. You know, whatever is made here is very quickly poured right back in and into the arts and uh, the beauty of the space. And uh, it's a great thrill to watch people uh, come here, and have this experience, uh, enjoy it at the level that they enjoy it. Uh, I can't tell you the number of compliments and, and oftentimes just the disbelief that people say, well, I came in here and you know, took off all my clothes and took a shower with you know 150 other people who I don't know and I can't believe it and it was wonderful. And uh, that's, I think, part of the magic that the fair uh, brings and part of what we contribute to that. Moritz is probably my favorite part of the fair just because there's such a feeling of freedom there and such acceptance. You never see that anywhere else. Uh, everyone is beautiful there. It, there's not a single ugly person there because you see that everyone is beautiful in their own way. There's such acceptance. Everyone is different. It's, I just love it there. The chanting and the saunas is just such a spiritual experience. I, I just love it. There. There's a lot of acceptance here. We can be ourselves here. Uh, that was the big thing about coming here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, big thing about coming we, here. We can just be ourselves. And, you know, no one looks at us funny. No one comments, you know. Um, I'm sure there were some photographers here who were taking our picture just because. But, you know, it's just, there is such acceptance here. It's, it's just, we can be ourselves and it's, not have to think about it. Yeah. You know? And yeah. So that's really Not important. have to worry about um, what, people think. what people think or doing something in front of their kids, holding hands or kissing or anything in front of their children because you know, they're scared of the lesbians, you know? Yeah. Here we can just be ourselves. Yeah. That's what the fair is all about. I just treat you like I do all my other friends. Now these other friends they're talking about, you think they might be having to talk about people who are black? What do you think? Are people of color? So when they reference that, they're talking about their friends that are white. So basically they just said to me, Johnny, I don't even think about you as being black. I just treat you like you are what? White. white. And if I'll oblige and act like I'm white, then guess what? We don't have to deal with this race issue that just showed up when who walked in the room? Me. You can be real white and I'll be token white and we both will be white. So let's don't talk about race. 
So it silences the whole conversation about race. And this is why we are so uncomfortable with it, because all of our life we've been silenced about these issues. to step outside of your comfort zone. Right. It's about opening your mind. Yeah. And exactly. seeing that we're regular people just like you. I think we get um, discouraged and slow down when we feel isolated, when we look around at the world and so much of it seems so crazy and so different from what we want that we shake our heads and kind of go do something else. And the power comes when we start getting together and talking about alternatives and fleshing out what people are doing creatively uh, in their lives. So when we can see each other, how many of us there are, how much um, brilliance there is, how many new things are being tried, that energizes us, that brings us out. And the fair is a place where we get to see each other. And I mean, on stage in the spoken word and in music and just in conversation, we, we get a sense that there are a whole lot of us that hold a vision of a different kind of way of doing things. And um, if we can sustain that and stay together, we can really make things happen. All about the brownies. All about the brownies. It's my first time. Oh, you're a virgin? She's a virgin. Oh my god, what do you think so far? <laughs> I'm very excited. I love it. This is home. People are so sweet. This is where all the people that I've been searching for hang out. What do you do? What we see here is the entire world, and we gain that perspective, the entire world perspective. The important thing about this is that our children who have been coming here for years and years and years grow up with this. My daughter is 18, she says, Dad, in two more years I'll be able to apply for an elder's pass. She grew up at the Oregon Country Fair, and what she learned here is optimism, is hope, is the way to imagine, to be creative, to put ideas together. And that's what the Oregon Country Fair does. It helps us put ideas together. So what have I learned in medicine? I've learned that if we assume personal responsibility for our own health care and for planetary care, the world and our own health is a much, much better place. Amazing. Really amazing. It's uh, one of the best experiences I've had in a really long time. I'm seeing that it's really positive for children to get that kind of a, an experience and they can't, I can't really imagine another place that you could. So, you know, when the fair brings this many creative people together, some good things are going to happen. Fair started in 69. So, energy park, ecology, uh, alternative and appropriate technology, sustainability, carbon footprint, the roots of all that is part of what we do. How we recycle, how we operate. The, the fair is a, an example of how to apply a lot of those things, whether it be solar power or recycling, uh, different sustainability. Community village, education, human services, Again, they've been there since the very beginning, showcasing ways that people can offer those kinds of services more humanistically, more transpersonally. Um, how, my stuff, how we interact and intervene with each other, uh, is also meant to be a showcase of how it could be between people, how they can work together horizontally with love, with equality, and still be efficient and get things done. 
um, these are all the things that bring me back here besides the art and the entertainment and the fun. Um, and I think that's what the fair is about. So making it a better world, sure, that's got to be part of our mission. Uh, that's what brings us all back every year in a lot of ways. The heart. <laughs> we return to it year after year. And, uh, well, we return to it. As, as I said, there were staff people working year-round on this. This land is here all the time. We bought the land long ago. That was brilliant. That was brilliant. <laughs> I don't know if it's really security. I think it's just being an envoy for what we're trying to what we're trying to achieve globally, which is just a better vibration and make sure that everybody feels safe and comfortable and really enjoys what life has to offer. You know, and hopefully we carry these three days, the other 362. That's really what I think security is. Much older I'm getting. <laughs> Thought it was easy, didn't ya? So this is the magical trio, which is a three-stage journey. There's the personal, which talks about all the personal essence and skills and talents that you brought into planting the seed of this beautiful, beautiful event. And then the second card is the interpersonal stage of development, where there's interaction. It's where you bring in all the characters to make this fabulous mix. But again, keeping in mind, we're not working on the outside of the wheel. We're trying to work towards the center of the wheel, which leads us to the stage of transpersonal and spiritual awareness, which was the purpose all along. Let's not lose sight of our ultimate goal. Thank you for inviting us all to join in your journey, the spiritual and sacred space.